of you, turn to 350, it's in your bulletin, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. So let's all stand and sing this together. thank you for your Holy Spirit being with us today, giving us peace and joy and happiness because you're with us. And it's always good that we trust you, Father. We trust you for all things concerning life, all things concerning death, because your word is so clear that you love us, you keep us, you take us, and we're yours forever. In Christ's name we praise you. Amen. Please be seated, everybody. The scripture is clear. It says, preserve me or keep me safe, another version says, O God, for in you I take my refuge. That's where I hide. That's where I'm coming to a safe place. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord, and I have no good thing apart from you. We all know that apart from God, there is nothing. The Lord is my chosen portion. He is my cup. He holds my lot in life in his hands. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places, and indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. 
I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night, he also instructs me in my heart. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will never be shaken. Never be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad. My whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon me to the grave. You will not let your righteous ones see corruption. What good news this is, folks. You make known to me the path of life, and in your presence there's fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forever. Wonderful news. Wonderful news for a legacy of someone that walked with God. Well, if you want to read along with me, it's always good to read a little bit of the history. You probably already read it. Juanita was born August 17, 1935, to Walter and Gladys Johnson Oven in Cameron, Iowa. She was married to Carol Hall on November 25, 1954, at the First Presbyterian Church, Cameron, Iowa. Three miles that way. And then cool. The couple, two and a half miles. The couple farmed near Williams and then near Blairsburg, and in 1979, she started as a cook at the Northeast Hamilton High School. After moving to Webster City in 84, she started a daycare in her home, deeply loved these kids and their families, and had many parties and fun events for them. The couple later moved to Blairsburg and resided there for a while. Juanita did scripture-based inspirational talks on cups and aprons. Now, how in the world can you get an inspirational, spiritual, scriptural talk out of a cup or an apron? But she knew, and she did it well. She would tell me once in a while about that. Some of you may have heard it or seen it or been part of that. She also enjoyed writing poetry and even won some awards for them. Juanita loved to entertain and have large gatherings where she could cook and serve big groups, make Scandinavian food, including Budapest, potato cakes, lefse, did I pronounce that right? I'm German. Good. Some of that's good, and I don't know about some of it. Anyway, Juanita loved the county fair and would help her grandkids make cream cheese mints and cookies to enter into the open classes. She also loved to watch her grandkids and great-grandkids show their animals at the fair and give them handfuls of quarters to play carnival games. There's a whole bunch of blue ribbons sitting in this group right now, folks, from animals at the fair. Praise the Lord. Oh, I thought someone was going to raise their hand and display those. Did you bring them with you? You did. Okay. Juanita was a strong woman physically, mentally. Not much got past her. She had many collections, including Beanie Babies, coffee cups, newspaper clippings, precious moment figurines, she loved tradition and having family for Palm Sunday, Easter dinner, Christmas morning. And she had a special place in her heart for her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She knew how to spoil them good. And they will carry with them those fond memories of sleepovers, coffee, kringla. Now, I do know that. That is good. And before bed, they got to eat well. And she got to be in school shopping with them, too. Juanita's family includes Carolyn Byrne Cross of Webster City, John's friend Leslie Hall of Radcliffe, Gwen and Dave Johnson of Ellsworth, David and Sherry Hall of Williams, lots of grandchildren, Aaron and Dan Feltus of Concord, New Hampshire, Brooke and Aaron Onder, or Wonder, I didn't ask, I'm sorry, of Mason City, Alex and Riley Cross of Grimes, Melissa Hall of Ames, Kate Callie Hall of Gilbert, Kane Hall of Radcliffe, Sarah and Barry Scott of Ackley, Allison Ryan Ridge of Stockton, Illinois, Nicole Carson, Nicole and Carson Ruge, wow, that was a guess, of Jolly, did I say that right? Oh, good. Nathan and Kelsey Hall of Pomeroy, Tyler and Maggie Fellows of Des Moines, Iowa, 17 great grandchildren, brothers Willis of an Wow, what a big family. She was preceded in death by her husband in December of 2020. Brother and sister-in-law, Wayne and Kate Oven. What a legacy sitting here 
from a couple that got married, and out of their love for each other, we got this crowd. Praise the Lord. And there's still more to come. And all of you, I'm sure, have heard about Jesus at one time or another out of Juanita's mouth. I'm sure. Praise the Lord. She's and Carol have also invited me once in a while to come to a couple of these dinners. So that was fun. We'd go over to Williams at the old gym that's there from the high school. Once it was in the hallway uh, at Windsor Manor. So that was kind of fun too. I just always appreciated it. And they always kept our family picture on their door, inside their door. And they prayed for us. Prayed for all of you too, a lot. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to sing another hymn, but before we do that, we want to have a little backstory to this song. Sarah's going to come up and read a little bit about this next hymn. It's called Beyond the Sunset. It's in your books, 548. Look for that now, 548. And then we'll sing that as soon as she's done, as soon as they're done. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. As a boy, I lived near the banks of a river over which the old paddle wheel steamers once plied between the cities upstream and the gulf. They tell me the story there of a chance meeting between an old man and a young boy who were fishing at the same spot. As the day wore on, the fishing was not productive, but man and boy conversation made them fast friends. The old man began to be concerned as the setting sun cast long shadows over the water, yet the boy gave no evidence of preparing to go home. Then from downstream, around the bend of the river, the lights of a paddle wheel steamer appeared, moving slowly upstream. Upon seeing the boat, the young boy dropped his cane pole and began waving his arms and calling to those who were standing on the deck. Amused, the old man said, Boy, don't be foolish. Those people aren't going to pay any attention to you. That boat is headed upstream to some place that you and I will never see. But the youngster would not be deterred, and he continued his waving. The boat slowly but steadily pulled closer to the bank. The boat finally stopped, and a plank was extended from the deck to the bank upon which the two stood. Gathering his pole and tackle, the young boy started across the plank to the deck, stopping to say to his astonished older friend, No, sir, you see, I'm not foolish after all. My father is the captain of this ship, and he has come to take me to our new home upriver. My prayer is that whenever the time comes for death to call our door, we know that we can board unafraid, since our Heavenly Father is just taking us to our new home, which he has prepared for us upriver. always good to have family talk about family. When you get together, folks, continue to talk about your family. Those that came way before you, those that are among you, just talk about it. A lot of you nowadays are getting on Ancestry.com or 23andMe or one of those DNA things, and you start searching and you're looking and you're finding out stuff you never knew. Isn't that interesting? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for family. God is so good to us. Let's sing that hymn. I can't lead you in it because I don't know the tune, but we'll pick it up as you go. Five, four, eight, you can stay in your view beyond the sun.
sunset, oh glad reunion with our dear loved ones who've gone on before. In that fair homeland, we'll know no parting beyond the sunset forevermore. That's exactly what it's about. Well, today's message um, is always about God and people in a funeral. God loving people, people loving God, people going on to be with him, those that know him, those that trust him. And so I thought today, I was given Juanita's Bible and there were a few things in here that she had written down or underlined. And today's message is Juanita's Bible. Isn't that great? They say you can tell the spending habits of someone and what they really love if you look at their checkbook. Some of you youngsters don't know what a checkbook is, that's okay. But if you look at their bank statement, you can tell what they really love, what they do. How? By what they spend their money on. Or you can tell what they really like as a hobby. You can drive past their house and you can see certain trinkets outside or statues. Or you can look in the garage and see fixed up, restored boats or cars. You can tell what they love by what they do with their time. You can tell kind of what they're like by how they treat their family. Are they good with them? Are they not good with them? Are they talking highly of them and loving them? Or are they talking badly of them, putting them down? You can kind of see how a family lives. You can tell a person's personality just by spending some time with them, if they're a good person or, or not. Well, I venture to say I can tell a lot about Juanita by some things that she had un underlined and highlighted and written down and, and made a saying about by looking through the Bible. And she already has it all clipped off with all the notes on it, so I don't even have to follow anything else but the Bible. Is that okay? You can never go wrong. One old preacher told me once, Peter, this is when I was a young pastor, he says, stay between the covers of the Bible and you'll always be right. Boy, that was good, deep wisdom right there from an old man that preached for 40 years. Stay between the covers of the Bible. Listen to this one, Matthew 6. This is why I tell you, do not be worried about food or drink or what you may need to stay alive or about clothes for your body. After all, isn't life worth a lot more than food? And isn't the body worth more than just the clothes that are on it? Look at the birds flying around. They do not plant seeds. They don't gather a harvest. They don't put in barns. They don't store up. But your Father in heaven takes care of every one of them. Aren't you? Rhetorical question here. You don't have to answer it. Aren't you worth much more than birds? Of course you are. You're made in his image. Which one of you can live a few years more? You can add to your life by worrying. I didn't see anybody raise their hand. None of us can add more to our life by worrying. And why worry about clothes? Look at the wild flowers that grow. They do not work. They don't make clothes for themselves. They don't spin. They don't toil and sow. But I tell you that not even Solomon, richest man on earth at the time, as rich as he was, the clothes that he had were so beautiful, but not like those of the flowers that God made. It is God who clothes the wild grass that's here today and gone tomorrow. Will he not also be more sure to clothe you when you need it? How little faith. So do not start worrying. Where will the food come from? Or my drink? Or my clothes? These are the things that the heathen are always worrying about. That's a good thought. This is a paraphrase, not a translation. I like that parenthesis in there. Your Father in heaven knows what you need about all things. Instead, instead of worrying, contrary to that, in contrast, give first place to his kingdom and to what he requires. And he will provide you with all the other things that you're seemingly worried about. So do not worry about tomorrow. You have enough worries today. There's no need to add to that the troubles that each day brings. Isn't that a great thought? Matthew 26, 29. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and gave prayer of thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples. Take and eat, he said. 
This is a symbol of my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks to God, and gave it to them. Drink it, all of you, he said, for this is the symbol of my blood, which seals God's covenant. A covenant is an eternal promise that God makes that nobody on earth can ever break. You can break your part of the covenant, he'll never break his. And you won't break his. I added that there. Wow. Seals the covenant. My blood has been poured out for many for the forgiveness of all sin. I tell you, I will never drink again of this wine until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn. They went out to the Mount of Olives. This was the very night that Jesus would be taken. You know the story of crucifixion. John 10, 7. Jesus said, this is one that afterwards she wrote this neat little thing that I'll read to you also. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the door for the sheep. All others that came before me are thieves and robbers, and the sheep will not listen to them. I am the door. Whoever comes in by me will be saved. He will come in, he will go out, he will find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, destroy. I have come in order that you may have life and have it to the fullness, <coughs> an abundant life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is willing to die for his sheep. The hired man who is not a shepherd and does not own the sheep leaves them. He runs away when he sees the wolf coming. So the wolf snatches up the sheep and scatters them. The hired man runs away because he is only a hired man. He doesn't care for the sheep. Big difference, huh? Between a shepherd and just a hireling. I am the good shepherd. As the Father knows me, I know the Father in the same way I know my sheep and they know me. I am willing to die for them. There are other sheep that belong to me that are not in the sheepfold. I must bring them too. They will listen to my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Listen to what Winita wrote here. Alone and afraid at the beginning of this poem or whatever the writing was. Wandering from the fold, away from the shepherd, away from the flock and I'm out in the cold. They call of his mercy echoes. 90 and nine are safe from the storm. 90 and nine shall be sheltered and warm. 90 and nine, but there must be one more. Could you be that lost sheep? That one that he's been searching for? What a great thought. You know, as I go through this, and I've read it before, I'm seeing a whole gospel message unfold before us of God's love for man. A gospel message, gospel literally means good news. And as you hear the story of Jesus, it's all good news. There's never anything that's bad. Bad for him, bad for his fate, but he knew, even going to his cross, that he was doing it for us, those of us sitting right here today, for Renita, for Carol, for all of those that have listened to their words as they read the Bible to them. She goes on with some different kinds of encouragements. For we know that all things work for the good to those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. And some people get mixed up here. I want to expound just a little bit. All things aren't good. All things work together for good for those who are called according to God's purpose, those who love him, them he loves. Boy, this is great. Faced with all of this, what can we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? Have you thought of that? What force out there can be against you when God is for you? In you, walking beside you, going ahead of you, surrounding you, guarding you. What possible force could ever come against you and prevail? None. This old boy that told me about the covers of the Bible, he always had little one-liners that were funny to me, but still deep. 
He took this verse, if God be for you, who can be against you? And he always said, if God be for you, the rest might as well be. That was good. That's profound too. Because they're the ones on the out, not you. There is nothing in all of creation, she, she highlighted here, that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus, our Lord. He is our Lord. So, she highlights again, therefore, let us come near to God with sincere heart, sure faith, and hearts that have been made clean from guilty consciences, bodies washed with pure water. So let us hold firmly to the hope that we profess, profess, because we can trust God to keep his promise. Hold firmly to this faith you profess, because you can trust God for his faithfulness, his longevity, his promise. Wow, he'll always keep his promise. It goes on to say, let us be concerned with one another, to help one another, to show love and to do good. Let us not give up with the habit of meeting together as some are doing out there today. King James is real concise. Let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. I love that word. Don't forsake it as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more since you see the day of the Lord quickly drawing near. She wrote here, just as a magnet, when you put it on a refrigerator, is drawn, let us be drawn by these verses towards Jesus. Do not be weary in well doing. Through your, through your labors, even though, not through, though your labors cause pain sometimes, this is her writing, there's always been a harvest from the sowing of the grain. Always a harvest. Suffering can be like a magnet that draws you closer to Christ, she said. Oh, I love that. Isn't that good? She's, in her just reading, has laid out a message for all of us. Since we read all of that in the front, therefore, at the end, let us come near to God. I'm going to read one of these cups of life. I don't know if I understand it, but this was, this was her thing, wasn't it? She did ministries talking about cups and aprons, was it? Did I still don't get it. I might be plain and simple. I might be pretty and dainty. I might be ugly and big. But no matter what I be, there is none other like me. But I am in but I am an important part, for I am special in my master's heart. Won't you look at me and see what I might say to you? For I have a story to tell, and I want to share it with others also someday. Those that we meet along the path of life. Isn't that powerful? This story that Juanita left for us. It's for her. She wrote it. She wrote it out. But it's now God is still getting the glory of her life. He's still getting the praise and honor from her, even in her death. That amazes me how God continues to work in us, through us, for us, with his blessing. Well, let's sing another hymn. Blessed Assurance 3, 4, 5. Congregation sings this one. We can sit again for this one if you want. We'll stand for the last one. It will be a uh, recessional for us. 3, 4, 5. Blessed Assurance.
good group of people singing God's glory. It should be your story. It should be your song. Nothing else to sing, really. That's all temporary. Well, this funeral service is not for Winita. She's already with the Lord. It's for us, sitting here, to learn about a little bit more about eternity, about immortality, about where we are all headed, where we are all going. Our spirit, us, the real person, not your body. You all know where your body's going to go. Some of us, gravity has already set in. Uh, but it, that's a joke right now. <laughs> but the rest of us, you're going along. Whatever God has for you, the Bible says every one of your days were already counted before the first one even began. Think about that. God's knowledge. He already knows the time, the date. He already knows the heartbeat, the breath. He knows it all. So relax and rest in him. Trust him for that. However that may come. Some hard, some a little easier, some short, some long, some young, some old. But let God take care of you as we first read it. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. You're going to be taken care of by God. So praise the Lord. When you leave here, continue to think about it. How do I stand with Christ? Do I stand knowing that he's got me and I've got him? Do I stand sometimes wondering if it's real or not? Do I stand, boy, I have a little faith now and a whole lot sometimes? Wherever that is, keep seeking him. Keep looking to him. You can't go wrong. Stay between the covers of the Bible. There's not an error in there, not one flaw, not one contradictory story. It may seem like it if you read bits and pieces back and forth, pick one verse and pick them, but read the whole thing. You'll see God's love for mankind from the creation of Adam to the cross of Jesus to your salvation and eternity. Amen. Let me pray with you again. Father, thank you so much for your spirit being with us, for that blessed life that you gave for us in sacrifice so that we might live. Thank you for this example we have in front of us with this lady, this woman, this mother, grandmother, wife that has lived with you and walked with you. Lord, we can't refute the example. We love you now. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Theo is going to come forward. Uh, the family will be ushered out. We're going to stand and sing today. Let's stand together. Take the name of Jesus with you. Let me give one little thing before they crank that up. Um, we're going straight to the cemetery. It's not far. It's Rose Grove. And then we're coming back. The family then will come in and sit down and be served by the ladies. Then the rest of us can go on in. So nobody go in the kitchen area, please, until we're back. And um, if you have to go... Uh, that's fine. If you want to come, you can. If, if you can't, for whatever reason, then stay right here and mingle. You can go outside. You can be in the lobby there. You can sit here in the sanctuary. So is that okay with everybody? If you have any problem with that, see uh, Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> She'll set you straight. Okay, so let's stand. Open up to 116. You probably have it already. Let's sing, take the name of Jesus with you. 